In this video I'm going to discuss how to employ Simpson's rule and the trapezoidal rules in Microsoft Excel. So I'm just going to briefly explain the concepts behind them and then we'll go to employ them. Remember from chapter 5 when we define the definite integral all right, of a function, we can view that graphically as the limit of a sum of a Riemann sum and that Riemann sum consisted of areas of certain rectangles. Okay, We obtain the rectangles by plugging in either the left, right, or midpoint, or some point in the interval to obtain a point on the graph, and we approximated the function by a constant function with that value over each one of our determined subintervals. Okay, and we looked at the sum of the areas of these rectangles, and that approximated the definite integral, approximated the area under the curve. Okay, now we knew also that we could increase our error in our approximation by using more and more subintervals. We take the limit as n goes to infinity, it ends the number of our subintervals, and we get the exact area under the curve, or we get the exact value of the definite integral. Now, the question is, can that be improved upon? Can you do this in a more efficient way? And the answer is yes. You got to do a little bit more work, though. The first approach is the trapezoidal rule, which instead of using horizontal line segments or just flat line segments, you're going to use ones that have some slope to them to fit the curve a little better. Okay, and you obtain them by looking at your partition. So I'm looking at the same function, 1 over x, 5 subintervals over the interval from 1 to 6. And now we're going to not just use one of the left, right, or midpoints from each subinterval. We're going to take both the left and the right and look at the points on the graph of the function there, connect them by a straight line segment, and then look at the area of this trapezoid now obtained by our subinterval and those points on our graph. Similar, do that for every subinterval. And then we can see that the area approximation is just better. It's more accurate immediately. Of course, as we increase the number of subintervals, our area approximation is going to get better and better. And you don't have to do as much work to, you don't have to go with as many subintervals to get a more accurate approximation. All right, so what I'm going to focus on is doing this with 10 subintervals over the interval from 1 to 6. All right, now let's employ that in Microsoft Excel. But I want to bring up the formula for it first. Okay, so if we add up the areas of the trapezoids, the area of the trapezoid is going to be one half times the lengths of the sides. Okay, and we're determining those by the function, by the values of the function, and then times the width, which is delta x. Now, if you add them all up for however many subintervals you have, you develop this formula. The one half can stay out front, the delta x can stay in front, and you're going to end up adding up a couple of them more than once because, for instance, the first um, interval, x1, plays the role of the right endpoint. For the second interval, from x1 to x2, x1 plays the left endpoint of that subinterval. So you're going to use those values twice. You're only going to use the outer ones from the very far left and very far right one time in um, employing the trapezoidal rule. Okay, so now let's do this in Microsoft Excel. So we're integrating from 1 to 6. All right, so I'm going to put those values in this column. Now we could go and, you know, for looking with 10 subintervals, our intervals of length 5, so we're going to have delta x being 0.5. We could do manually type in 1.52, 2.5, etc. But Microsoft Excel is built exactly to do some of these calculations for us. So what we're going to do is put an equal sign, and then we're going to put the value we want to add to, or the number we want to start with, which is in B, B2, in cell B2. And we're going to add on, so plus, our delta x, which is 0.5. Now, going back to that cell, going to the lower right hand corner, you left click, hold it, and then drag it down to get up to 6, or go down as far as you need to, okay, and then it puts those partition points in for us. Now we want to compute the value of the function at each one of these partition points. So we're going to use our function 1 over x, our formula, we're going to put equals, and then we want to compute the value of the, of the function for the x directly to our left, so we're going to do 1 over the number directly to our left, which is in cell B2 and press enter and it computes it. 1 over 1 is 1. Now going back to that cell where we created the formula, go to the lower right corner, left click, hold down and then drag it and it computes all the values for us. Now the multipliers are coming from the sum formula. The first one we just use once, this each other partition point we're going to use twice. So we get 1 and then we're going to get 2's up until the last Partition point six, we're going to again use that point only once. All right. 
and then we multiply these values together in the sum formula. So again, we're going to put equals, right? whenever you want to create a formula using numbers in other cells, you have to put equal sign first, and then you get, we want to multiply the numbers directly to our left, so it's going to be C2 times D2, press enter, again, 1 times 1 is 1, that's verifying that, go to the lower right, left click, hold, drag it down, and it computes all the values for us. Now, what we want to do is add these numbers together, that's part of our formula. We're going back to the formula, what we've just done is compute each one of these numbers here in the brackets, we want to add them up and then multiply that by one half and then that times delta x. Okay, so our delta x is 0.5, so we're going to do equals and then the one half was in front times, now this, the command in Microsoft Excel to add things together is sum, so you're going to write sum parentheses and then you're going to highlight all the cells you want to add together. Close the parentheses and then multiply that by our delta x, which is also one half. Okay. Press enter. That's our approximation. Okay, so using the trapezoidal rule to approximate the area under the curve 1 over x from 1 to 6 with 10 subintervals, you get 1.811544.0012. And that's totally fine to do it that way. I'd say the only inefficient thing that we did here was had to type in by hand these multipliers. Way to put the one and all the twos and the one here at the end. There's a way to avoid that though. Okay, and the way to avoid that is to use the formula for the area of trapezoid over each subinterval. So let's take a look at that. All right, and remember what the area of our trapezoid was. It's one half times the sum of the function values over our subinterval times our delta x. So let's have Microsoft Excel just do that. We don't need to put the the multiplier in. Okay, so let's do the approximate the area approximation for each interval. Well, I'm going to start in the second um, column down because the first subinterval is from one to one and a half. All right, we don't want to do this ten times. We don't want to do this um, more than ten times. So we're going to go in the subinterval or neck cell. We're going to put equals and then write the formula. It's one half times the sum of the function values. So we want to add the values in the boxes C26 and C27 and then multiply that by um, our delta x which is 0.5 or 1 half. Okay. Now we don't have to do that for each one. Excel will repeat the calculation. Just go back to that place where you created the formula. Lower right corner, left click, hold it down and take it all the way down. Now these numbers look a little different, but remember, we're going to add these all together. This is the area of approximation, area approximation for each subinterval. We want to add them up, so we're going to hit equals, sum up all of these numbers that we just computed, and then press enter, and that's the same exact value we had before. Okay. So that's the two different ways to do it in using Microsoft Excel. I prefer the second way because then I don't have to type anything in. We just use the the values we're looking at over our interval, our x values, the function values we obtained by letting Microsoft Excel compute them, and then we used the formula for the area of the trapezoid over each subinterval, and then just add them together.